Those are the ones I for. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. As always, before we start our meeting, we ask our city clerk to read the quote for the week. Madam City Clerk. Thank you. When you choose to be pleasant and positive in the way you treat others, you have also chosen in many cases how you are going to be treated by others. Thank you very much. And as always, we have the uh, city clerk read the quote of the week. And we've had some uh, throughout these times that we've been doing that we've had some really good responses. People actually uh, watch and listen to the quote and appreciate it. So thank you very much, Madam City Clerk. Call the ninth regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren. Here. Bauk. Here. Decker. Here. Gisha, Here. Hannah, Here. Heidemann, Here. Kittleson, Clayunis, Meyer, Here. Montemayor, Here. Rinfleisch, Here. Ryan, Zurich, Vanderweel, Rehasselt, and Wangeman. 16 present. Quorum is present. This time is uh, time to pledge allegiance to the beautiful country we live in. I'd like to ask Alderman Kittleson to lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Kittleson. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move for the approval of the minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve minutes under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes stand approved. Confirmation of mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. This came in at the last meeting. I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration to the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force, Alderperson Clayunas and Meyer, David Beevil, Paulette Enders, Jim Hulbert, John Hill, Thomas Grittinger, Scott Hansen, Thomas Henning, Sarah Thiel, Ted Vallis, Pat Hartley, Vicki Hall, Dirk Zeilman, Reagan Howlett, Jeffrey Goins, Sue Bizzing, and Aaron Brault. Signed by the Mayor. Thank you, Attorney McLean. I'd ask for a motion to confirm. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to confirm the appointments. Second. Motion and second to confirm appointments under discussion. Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. I want to thank you for naming these uh, prestigious people to the committee. I have also heard from a number of people in the, in in the city who are also interested in this task force and um, will be interested in following the meetings, and I'll invite them to as well to be participating in this. So it's a great step forward for the city, I believe. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much, Alderman Clayunas. Any other? There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Confirmation is approved. Presentation. At this time, before I ask Tudor uh, Lee to come up, just wanted to briefly go back, just, to, just briefly, to uh, the year before when I talked to the, uh, the council and said that this year was going to be a year to work with technology. Uh, as many of you are aware and the public is aware that uh, our technology uh, was, was lacking. I made it a point. To, uh, to, to work hard and to put a plan together so that we could address our technology needs, and that's exactly what we're doing. And I've asked Tudor Lee to uh, appear before us and tell us exactly uh, what, what's, what's he's doing and what's going on, sort of where we've been and where we're going and what we hope to accomplish and the benefits of the changes that are being made. And that's basically what the little presentation is about. It's not a, a full-blown presentation. Obviously, you, you, will, you may have some questions. If you do, please jot them down. Feel free to call Tudor tomorrow or any other day after tonight and uh, ask questions. Mr. Lee? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Do we have, hold on, do we have a, a mic for Tudor? Are you going to use some? Thank you. Do I have to push that button now? Yes. Good. We're going to let this power up a little bit first before we get it started. Can everybody hear me? A little better? Okay. Start with that. Is it too dark? Or should we have the back one on or just try the back one on, Chief? The other one. That'll do it. Yep. Thank you, Chief. 
the uh, don't you love technology when it works? Mm -hmm. But uh, we're in the process of right now of taking the city of Sheboygan through a technology uh, renovation. After a number of years of where the city had been kind of lacking in some of the technology that I think is, is, is required in order to make the city more efficient, uh, more process oriented, more uh, custom off the shelf software versus development house. Uh, I was brought on board to help transition the city to that. So with that in mind, a plan was put together that will more or less take the city down this technology roadmap. And I want to take that, the opportunity here to go through and kind of share that with you of what we're doing down there for the city so that we can look at and read the benefit of these technology and the benefit of the efficiency that will provide the city for years to come. Oh, sorry. The, the vision that has been put together here is that we're going to be able to provide any information to any location to any authorized user. That will be the vision that we will be using to disseminate this new technology roadmap for the city of Sheboygan. Obviously, our department mission here is to connect the city of Sheboygan to information. I think that's probably one of the big things that's been lacking here in the city before is that while the technology has been there, it has been very hard to get at. You know, one of the missions that we're going to do here for the city here is that we're going to make available to any individual, any location, any information that they're authorized to see. And that's part of what we're going to try to do here with the new technology once it's all completely uh, implemented. The business goal, obviously, is to go through and provide seamless customer service, operational efficiency, constant innovation, supporting public safety. It's the only reason why uh, Chief Kirk is here, too, as well. And then uh, self-sufficiency through knowledge transfer. Our own IT goal, outside of that, enterprise IT investment. Optimize technology investment and value through improved coordination of IT procurement. What that means is that previously to this, each department more or less purchased or procured their own technology. It made it for a kind of a mishmash of inoperable system that didn't talk together. One of the main goals that we have here with this new technology is that regardless of who is purchasing that technology, it will coincide with the overall strategy of what we have for the city so that when it's all said and done, all the technology will be interconnected and the information will be shared. It will be entered in one location and one location only, and you can access that information from anywhere that you're able to get to the network here. Our enterprise architecture, probably not as exciting, but what essentially it says is that we're going to put together a methodology that regardless of what the technology is, it has to fit within that, time, that framework so that you know, whatever vendor, whatever hardware, whatever software, we can take it, we can plug it in, and it will be able to communicate with the technology that we, ha we have in-house today. Integrated government. Develop policy and strategy that advance a culture within the city of Sheboygan here that both recognize information as a public asset and promote uh, coordinated cross-jurisdictional services to deliver, uh, to deliver information to the constituent. It basically, it's just a real weird way of saying that, you know what, regardless of whether the information resides at the police department, at the fire department, or in planning and development, what we expand to do or expound to do here is that ultimately that information will be in one centralized location that, so you can get to it if you want to know, you know, what is the crime rate within the city, within this jurisdiction or within this uh, 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 ward, that you can go through and look at that and be able to pull the information yourself so that you can see that and then be able to cross-reference that information to, you know what, how much money is the city spending in terms of economic development within that particular district. So ultimately, that's what our aim is to do with that. Obviously, workforce management. Ensure that a skilled technology workforce is available, trained, and effect effectively employed to efficiently achieve city objective. Ultimately, what you're looking here is that as we move forward into this millennium, what is going to be the biggest stake here for the city is, 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 is more or less dissemination of information. More and more, if you kind of even look at some of the companies that used to work here, you know, they're, they're, they're moving away from manufacturing and production work to more of a service-related uh, entity. And that's what we meant, mean to do here is to work with the technical college, 
uh, UW Sheboygan, what have you too as well, to produce the next generation of, of workers that would be able to sustain the technology that's going to be deployed here within the city. Obviously, within the overall goals or some subset goal that's uh, uh, provided here too as well, in your enterprise investment, provide a common direction for optimizing IT procurement. Again, making sure that whatever department is purchasing the technology, that it will be the same technology, that it will be more or less be able to integrate to the existing infrastructure that we have here in the city. Deploy technology solution is support a common agency business need. Ultimately, what the city here exists to do is to provide services to the citizenship of the city, who pays the tax that more or less provides the livelihood for the people that, that work here. Our goal is to be able to provide those solutions to be able to support that, you know, allow the police department to have better access to information, newer technology, allow the fire department to be able to get to a fire and be able to understand, you know, what, what kind of building it is, what kind of hazardous material are there. And that is what we try to do with this technology. Again, the enterprise architecture. Identify and optimize technology investment that conform to the established enterprise architectural principle. We have a framework in, in place. Everything that we're going to produce or purchase in the future will have to fit within that, that silo that we're uh, deploying here for the city. Obviously, ensure that future technology implementation complies with the city of Sheboygan's architectural principle. Again, making sure that there are process and procedures in place so that 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, we're not going to have to go through and more or less reinvent the wheel. Everything we're doing here today will be self-sustaining if the city maintains it and, and keeps it moving forward. Information sharing. Make interaction with city of Sheboygan government more efficient. Ultimately, as I uh, mentioned before, you will be able to get onto the system's uh, infrastructure here, whether it's through the city's website or through the financial system, be able to gather those information that you need. You know, what's the crime rate? Well, how much the city is spending on, on, on a project? You know, where, where are some, some of the economic development with the city that needs to be done? Uh, information sharing. Eliminate technical barriers to information sharing. Again, the way that the system is set up today, we're not able to get in there to be able to disseminate the information that's within the system. The new technology that we're putting into place will be able to disseminate that information any place, any authorized users, and any piece of information. Uh, security, ensure that the technology system and infrastructure are secure and compliant with City of Sheboygan's policy. Ensure that adequate pre preparation are in place for a timely recovery of all City of Sheboygan IT services in the event of a disaster. One of the shortcomings that I see in the city right here right now is that if there was a major disaster that happened onto City Hall, there's probably a 99% chance that we would not be able to restore the information technology that's down there right now, including the data. So there is a, 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 a high risk involved with the current infrastructure. So we need to put in place process and technology that would allow the city to recover that information. And then integrated government. Eliminate process and project barriers to uh, integration of government service delivery. Again, working with all the department heads to make sure that information as needed will be provided to any individual and to any location. <coughs> Workforce management. Conduct an evaluation of existing resource skills and develop a plan to acquire the skill needed to implement agency enterprise architecture. Essentially, it just means that working with the local communities here, the local colleges, to make sure that, yes, there is going to be adequate uh, resources to, uh, to provide services to, to the city for years to come. Ensure that the IT workforce has the skill to, required to meet the city's IT needs. Not only are we getting very complex in terms of technology, but the workforce that will be the next generation to provide services to the city will also have to have those skills. Not only you know, in, 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 in the public works or in the police department or in the fire department or even in administration, the level of technology has gone up tenfold. We need to make sure that the employees of the city here is adequately trained and that we have future resources to be able to go out there and get those employees. And then now, uh, I'm going to take you through a little process of some of the significant technology projects that we're, we are working on right now. Obviously, the biggest one that we're working on right now is the financial information system. Currently, right now, the city runs on an ACE 400 
DB2 basically is the database where all the information is stored. It's on a green screen system running on, the, on a fat client. It's what they call, basically it's a desktop PC. The process that we're going through right now is migrating the city here through to uh, an interior thin client system that is open. What that ultimately means is that it's going to be a web browser base so that if you have connectivity to the city, you will be able to get to the information. Prior to that, the getting to the information was very archaic. You had to be very familiar with the system to be able to pull out any information that was relevant. With this new system, all you need to know is that, you know, what, what department do you want to look at, what is the general ledger code you want to look at, and you will be able to retrieve that information and be able to make sense of what is that information telling me. Obviously, one of the things that we're going through too as well is that we will be deploying thin clients to the city. What that means is that we will no longer be deploying a full-blown desktop. What thin clients are essentially is just a big monitor with a little machine that connects to the server. And what that does for the city is that, I have a screen of this later on, but what that does for the city is that on a typical fat client desktop, you're, you're, you're paying about $1,000 for a machine. With this, these thin clients will cost the city uh, $400 per machine. Okay? What it does is that a fat client has a usable life of three to five years. These thin clients will have a usable life of seven to 10 years. So we've stretched that $400 that we've saved, uh, the $400 that we're uh, purchasing on these machines over 10 years. So not only are we saving the city money, but we're also improving the infrastructure too as well. The, the project, the first phase of the financial software project is slated to go live January 5th of 2009. Within that would be the general ledger, the budgeting, the human resources, the payroll, the purchasing, and the fixed asset. Also included in that first phase would be your project in Grand Accounting, the treasury management, accounts receivable, and general billing. Now there's a secondary phase to the first one here, and that will include the business licenses, the permit and code enforcement, basically that's building inspection. Uh, applicant self-tracking, and then employee self-services. What we hope to do with the employee self-services is that as we move into this process is that all individuals that have access to a computer screen will be able to go on there and enter their own time into the system versus writing it on a time card, uh, putting it down to a central location, and then have somebody going through and key punching all that information into the system. The employee self-service will also allow individuals to go through and change their deduction uh, make any vacation requests and all that, all online without the use of paper. Now, obviously, there's going to be a second phase to that, too, as well. Uh, it's slated to go live May and June of 2009. What that will include is the inventory module, your work order, fleet, and facility maintenance. Essentially, it is the work order that will control the Department of Public Works, uh, pet licenses, uh, parking tickets, and then uh, we're also looking at citizen self-service. What that means is that as a citizen, they can come on to the company, to the city's here website, pull up their, any of their financial record, be able to look at uh, uh, statistical uh, history of crimes, uh, you know, development, anything like that that's associated with the city that they're able to go through and look at. We're also in the process of uh, looking at a, police, a new police software too as well. The current system right now runs on an AS400 green screen and we're in the process of looking at alternative, alternative to replace that particular system. Again, the current system is only being utilized by the city of uh, Sheboygan, the county, and then uh, Plymouth, Sheboygan Fall, and Kohler. The new system that we're looking at right now is being utilized by about over 40 some other agency within the state of Wisconsin here. What that's going to do for the city of Sheboygan is that, you know what, it no longer will be isolated. What it will be able to do is share information, crime data, statistics with all of these other agencies throughout the, uh, throughout the uh, state of Wisconsin. Uh, again, on top of that, a squad will be able to go through and look at, you know, uh, the video. They'll be able to go through and look at pictures of, 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 of crim uh, criminals and what have you, of seeing uh, accident and what have you. And we will be able to go through and track all of the mobile units on a, on, a, on a GPS basis so that we can know exactly at any point in time where a particular squat is. The current status on that is that an RFP has been submitted. We've gotten the responses back, and we're in the process of evaluating that right now. So 
there will be some more additional follow-up in the future. Again, as I mentioned before, is that your current desktop, our, our FAT client, average cost is about $200. Useful life, three to five years. And we're moving the city to, to a thin client architecture. Four, average cost is $400 per unit. Useful life, seven to 10 years. Communication. Right now, there are over 298 hard copper phone lines that comes into uh, the city of Sheboygan's various uh, municipal building. Each phone line costs the city $10 and I think 54 cents per line. So if you multiply $10 and 54 cents per line times 298 per month, that gives you about almost $3,000 a month that we pay for phones. Now, we're in the process of looking right now at a new technology called voice over IP. The first installation of this is going at the new police department. But what voice over IP will allow the city to do is that we're in a process that we can reduce those number of phone, physical hard phone lines from 298 to 40 phone lines. Okay? And be able to not, and, and not lose any of the communication that we have with the outside world. So from 298 to 40, that's a huge saving in terms of, you know, even though $10 and 54 cents a month is not a lot, at 298 lines, that's over 20, almost 30,000 a year that's paid for phone services. So as once the police department is done, we'll start looking at City Hall and some of the other uh, uh, municipal buildings to start implementing this technology for those uh, uh, facilities too as well. Probably one of the big things that we're do, uh, doing down there is, is sustainability. Uh, server virtualization. Essentially what that means is that currently right now you have three, two AS400 downstairs. What we have done is that we have migrated that to Windows Server. Three physical Windows Server, the annual maintenance cost on those three Windows Servers is about $500. The annual maintenance cost on those uh, two AS400 downstairs is almost $30,000. So from the, uh, from the standpoint of, of sustainability and, and, and cost savings, we'll be able to provide that. Server virtualization, what that means is that we're able to run multiple servers within a physical stack. It's kind of hard to explain if you're not technical, but what it means is that we can run many, many applications on one box using this technology. And then as well as the thin client too as well. Budgetary change. One of the things that I will be working with Terry Hansen, our new director of finance on, is that as we move into the future, all information technology outlay, capital outlay, will be administered by the IT department so that we can meet those IT goals that we have at the beginning. That you know, it's the same platform, fits within what the city needs, and will allow us to more or less leverage what we have already implemented. Obviously, some of the future initiatives that we will be looking at, uh, paperless environment. In, at the end of this month, we will be looking at a couple of companies that will be, that provides uh, council meeting and, and agenda meeting. So that's one of the technology that we will be looking at to uh, uh, implement here within the city. Also, online payment. You know, currently right now, if you want to pay a bill, parking, uh, what have you, you have to come down to City Hall and pay that uh, physically at one of the windows. One of the things that we're going to do is look at online payment so that if you want to pay your parking ticket or any sort of other bills that you owe the city, you can go onto the city's website and make that payment without driving down here waiting in line, getting a parking ticket again, and then paying that. So again, the, the voice, uh, voice over IP, which is the, uh, the phone system. Obviously, one of the other things that we'll be looking at as far as the initiative is citywide information sharing, helping the citizens of this city communicate better with their government, uh, either through the video and council meeting or through, through some sort of other communication through our website so that we can provide the information to the citizens of the city. And then obviously one of the other projects that we'll be looking here at before the end of the year is looking at a time and attendance system. With this many number of employees and the, the redundancy of going through and having to key punch in all their time back into the system in order to process payroll, we will be looking at a way to automate that process. Now if you kind of look at it at, at, a, at a budgetary uh, annual budget what the city outlays out. If you think of in terms of 
uh, errors that, that will go into the processing of payroll, 1% of the city's uh, uh, budget, if there's a 1% error, that's over $300,000 that's, that's mis, uh, uh, put into a, to the wrong bucket or what have you. So that's what we intend to do with the time and attendance, is to be able to go through, automate the process, provide efficiency, and, and more or less provide cost saving too as well in terms of the people entering information through the system and the accuracy of that information. And that is the end of the presentation. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sir. Uh, no. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Chief, can we get the light, please? We'll just give uh, Tudor a few minutes to get that stuff out of the way. Thank you, Tujer. Getting a little warm. Yeah. May we? No, everybody okay? Yeah, if we can, just take a couple couple minutes. Can we pop that window open, please? It's getting a little warm, yeah. Somebody. There you go. It'll get some circulation. Thank you very much. Uh, as I said, Alderman, if any of you have any questions, feel free to either call me or call Tudor Lee directly. Uh, he'll be able to answer your questions. Next item on the agenda is a public forum. Madam City Clerk. Uh, yes, this evening we have Milton Storm. If you would come up to the mic, please. Can I get your home address, please, Milt? Yes, yeah, it's 1736 Marvin Court. That's in Sheboygan. And I've owned my home for 43 years and paid the taxes on it. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Now, I'd like to thank the Honorable Mayor and professional representatives of this Common Council, and I really want to thank Sue Richards' department for allowing me this time to speak. The city clerk's office is blessed with some of the finest young ladies who go by beyond the call of duty with such friendliness and professionalism. My reason for speaking this evening, some of us missed our police chief, David Kirk, when he took a much needed vacation. In his absence, Assistant Chief Sharon did a fantastic fill-in with no reduction in the quality of services of our police department. Our police department, along with our sheriff's department, do not need any diversity or multicultural training, as was stated in a Sheboygan Press article. Rather, what is needed is some type of sensitivity training for the mayor and his staff and nine unnamed older persons. My memory is poor, but I believe it was Wednesday night that I attended the ad hoc county city services committee meeting over at the Sheboygan County Administration Building, am I correct? The county is very fortunate to have Adam Payne who gave a excellent presentation on shared services. I also enjoyed County Board Chairman William Gearing when he overshadowed Alderman Gishi and Mark Hanna. I was disappointed in the three residents of the Sheboygan who spoke in the open session. In my opinion, they were poor representatives of the rest of us good citizens of our city. One of the speakers, a Mr. Carter Paulus, had his statements quoted in a Sheboygan Press article. After the meeting and in the hallway, I met Mr. Paulus and he asked me why I didn't speak. I informed him with my advanced age of wisdom, I know when it is better to keep my mouth shut. I'm sorry, I apologize for my rudeness here. My advice to the mayor and his staff and some of the members of this council, slow up a little bit. You may be pushing your agenda too fast, and you may regret it later down the road. There are many, there may always be someone listening and watching and eager to exercise the freedom of speech. I may be one of those. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. That's it. Is that it? Thank you. 
Okay. Next item on the agenda is a, a public hearing. And that is to amend the text of the City of Sheboygan Zoning Ordinance to delete Section 15915, Subsection 6A, 6A and A3 relating to the designation of historical structures. Is there anyone here that would like to address the council? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Is there anyone? There is no one. Alderman President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Motion and second to close the hearing. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearing is closed. Consent agenda 9 1 through 9 33. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion that all ROs be accepted and placed on file and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Alderman Wagaman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to uh, pull out document number 911 for a separate vote, please. 911. 911 reads, an RC by the Committee of the Whole recommending approval documents, approving the documents, submitting the fire department's report and copy of quality assurance plan and adding that they want the chairperson of public protection and safety to include a Sheboygan Fire Department ambulance quality assurance update on the public protection and safety agenda not less than once quarterly. Would you like to make a motion, Alderman Wagman? If you want to pull it out for a separate vote? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to pull it for a separate vote. No, you need to put the report, uh, accept and adopt the report committee. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd make a motion we accept and the, uh, adopt the report of committee. Is there a second to that? Second. Second. Okay. Under discussion, anything else, Alderman Wagaman? Uh, yeah. I had uh, received several communications from uh, citizens who were somewhat upset over the uh, makeup of the uh, assurance ambulance insurance assurance committee they felt that uh, the citizens should be more involved in this and uh, they seem to be uh, rather upset about that point they feel that <clears throat> having it entirely controlled by the council and uh, other officials that it's uh, akin to putting the fox in charge of the hen house, they feel they're not going to get a good a good judgment on cases brought before this committee, and they would much rather see that the uh, uh, citizens of the city become much more involved in this. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Alderman Bauk. I was going to speak on a different on a different topic, one? sir. Okay, Alderman Rinfleisch. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, to some degree, I agree with the, uh, the previous statements made by Alvin Wangeman here. Um, having uh, on public protection safety gone through the plan, um, the, the quality assurance actually deals with several different issues. Uh, billing and perhaps quality of service would be one. In terms of the medical aspects, I have no problems with that. It's not for anybody else uh, who's not medically proficient to really be in charge of making decisions that way. Uh, but for me, I think it would be nice to see that uh, uh, there would be some public input as well um, in terms of the quality assurance. I think we have nothing to hide. I think we have an excellent service, um, but I think by having that public input, we can bring the public along and it'd be a little more clear to say, here's the service, here's the plan, here's what's happening, here's a complaint, here's how it's being dealt, uh, and then um, the public can be more on, on the side of the ambulance service instead of fighting against it. So I would hope to see a little bit more clear currency on that aspect, but uh, um, that'd be my concern that I think with down the road, we can still look at adding that committee if possible. Thank you. Alderman Longman, second time. <clears throat> Just one small comment. Uh, the people I talked to as a whole said they are meant in no way to mean that the fire department wasn't providing adequate service because they're all uh, very much aware that the uh, fire department ambulance service is right up there with the very best of them and that the fire department, of course, is staffed by very dedicated and uh, uh, highly trained people who would, you know, uh, really uh, do the job the very best way they could. And that's also a personal feeling of mine, knowing some of the men and having worked with them in the past. Uh, in fact, I've known Chief Lutusky for a very long time. So there, this should not be taken to cast any aspersions on the fire department's quality of service. Thank you. Yep. And we have Alderman Ryan. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I think it should be noted that public protection and safety meetings are open to the public, and any time that there is a review at a public protection and safety meeting of the ambulance service, the public is more than welcome to be there. Uh, the agendas are on the city website uh, every week or every two weeks before the meetings take place, and if the public would like to attend, they're more than welcome to be at PPNS meetings uh, to review the, the ambulance service. Thank you. Thank you. All member Hassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Again, I, this, a lot of the comments, I guess, have been made, but I don't think there's anything to hide. We've got a good quality fire department and ambulance service. We've got an excellent public protection and safety committee. I don't think there's any reason to, uh, I guess, not make things more transparent. I think considering all the heat from last summer when this issue initially came up, it'd be wise, at least in the short term, to keep things as tra transparent as possible. From a constituent standpoint, even though they are allowed to come to public protection and safety, Constituents are not involved, involved directly in the decision-making process. So I could see some benefit long-term to actually putting constituents, putting residents on the committee and giving them some decision-making authority. Thank you. And Alderman Bulk. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask the distinguished uh, Alderman from the 3rd District what the benefit it is, of it is. I, I don't know how we could be any more transparent than having open meetings, uh, the, the attendance of which is very public, the minutes of which are absolutely public, uh, other than creating another level of bureaucracy in this system, I'd like to hear someone articulate the benefits other than some sort of transparency that doesn't exist. There's no extra layer of transparency that exists. I'd like to hear someone comment on what the benefits to adding another layer of bureaucracy to that oversight would be. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I know this has been, I'm just going to say a few words and I'll call the roll. I don't know this, is, this is, continues to be somewhat of a contentious issue. It started off on a rocky... Uh, on a rocky pattern, uh, it continues to, to be on a rocky pattern. Uh, public involvement is always good. Uh, do we need public involvement in every committee? Well, we do have public involvement. They elected all of you. That's their public involvement. When people elected you, they said, we are going to put my faith and my trust in you as my alderman to represent my interest. Uh, it, it, it gets a little tricky here because if you're going to have, when, when, when the city was involved in a coalition that involved several jurisdictions, there was an important need to have equality assurance because you had a lot of players. In this case, there's only one player. Uh, that minimizes the need to have that type of quality assurance. That doesn't minimize the need to have citizen involvement, but it minimizes the need to have that quality assurance. And that is precisely why we have standing committees. Uh, otherwise, we're going to need a quality assurance to make sure that the police department is, is handling uh, traffic calls and, and, and crime calls uh, adequately. We're going to have to have a quality assurance to make sure Bill Bittner's cutting trees right and mowing the lawn right uh, to the satisfaction of some people. It gets a little tricky, uh, and I, I can understand uh, Alderman Bauk has made an excellent point. Uh, there is complete transparency. One of the things that you've done that I've proposed, that I've uh, advocated, and you've, you've done is that you've made this government more transparent than any other government that has been in the past. If any of you are, are not aware, we've had the most open records requests ever in the last two years. And you know what, folks? People got what they asked for. They get, they can have anything they want. So it's tricky. Uh, be careful with political appeasement. Be careful with uh, flowery words and flowery terminology. Let's keep it clean. And I think that where we're at now is uh, the, the, the fire department is, is doing a great job. Uh, there's, there's nothing to hide. We have nothing to hide. Uh, let's just move this thing forward. We will call the vote on 9-11. If you vote no, that means you're voting not to uh, accept and adopt the report of committee, which, you, which means that you do not want a, quarterly, uh, a minimum of a quarterly update uh, before the public protection and safety. Okay, if you vote yes, that means you do want it. All in for hassle. Mr. Honor, could you just clarify it? Because I was reading the document, I guess, is twofold, that we're not only asking for a quarterly update, but we're also approving the quality assurance plan. So it's a twofold? It's twofold, yes. It's not just the quarterly update? Correct. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Everybody okay? Please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Zurich, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. and Wangaman. No. 15 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. The balance of 9-1 uh, through 9-33.
with the exception of the one we just acted on, which is 911, and we have Alderman Bout. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, under discussion on the consent agenda, I just wanted to publicly thank the Public Works Department and the City Engineering Department uh, for item 925. That was a great idea from a neighbor who was, you know, submitted this idea to save the city some money. Let's get it done while the equipment's nearby. The Public Works Department didn't have to jump that, didn't have to act that quickly. The engineers didn't have to act that quickly, but they saw an opportunity to give great customer service uh, to some of the District 2 constituents, and I just want to publicly thank them. They've, they've reacted. We still don't know if it's going to get done. There's some petitions and some paperwork, but I just really wanted to thank Director Bittner uh, and the engineers for, for reacting so quickly and giving the city uh, some great customer service. Thank you, Alderman Bell. Alderman Renfleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. On 923, there's just a, a clerical correction to make on the report of committee. Uh, the second to bottom line uh, recommends that the report, of, or I guess third to bottom line, recommends that the report of officer be accepted and placed on file and to approve the request contingent on identification for the city, not from the city. Just for the city. Uh, please make that okay. note. Okay, thank you, Alderman Renfleisch. That correction will be made, is noted and made. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just noticed under 912, okay. this is an RC by lawn licensing. In the minutes, it states for license number 6617 that Alderman Bourne made the motion to grant the license. Under Robert's rules, that is not acceptable. And I just wanted to clarify if that's... Oh. Well, is that, as chairman, did you make a motion? I can't recall. <clears throat> um, I believe Robert, thank you, Alderman Meyer. I believe Robert Rules of Order states that the chairman may not make motions, may second, but may not make motions. Uh, I'd ask you to take a look at that. I don't think that's accurate on committees, but uh, I'd be happy to look into it. I, I believe committee chairman can make motions and they can act just like uh, the other members of the committee, but I'll look into that. Okay, well, it has been accurate up to now. And if it's not accurate, we, we need to correct it from here on. It needs to be in writing so that the committee's chairman and the members get that in writing, Attorney McLean. But past practice has been, and past practice as of understanding the rubber rules of order has been, including when I was in, in the school board, that the chairman of any committee is not able, is not, uh, re, is, cannot make motions. They may second motions for the sake of discussion and vote to carry it to a vote, but they may not make motions. If that has changed, if that will change as tonight, I would like that in writing. Hand, uh, deliver to each alderman so that we can act appropriately from here on. Thank you very much. Uh, I could, I've never seen anything that says that's the case, nor am I aware that that's in fact practice. Uh, I'll provide an opinion to the council and to you, the mayor. Please do. Thank you. Okay. 9-1 nine, nine through 9-33, with the exception again of 9-11, there has been a motion for the approval and passage of everything in there. Is there anything else? There is none. Please call the roll. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Clyunis? Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Rinfleisch? Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. And Wangeman? 16 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 934 through 940 will be referred. 935, please make a notation. Alderman will also be referred to transit. The actual document deals with two separate issues, one dealing with public protection and safety and one dealing with transit. Alderman Bauk, thank you for pointing that out. Report of Officers 2, 941, by the City Clerk submitting a communication from TV8, Director, City of Sheboygan, uh, stating that there are changes for the channel cable channels and the charter cable viewers may not be able to access access local government local and government channels beginning August 12th. Uh, you you will be uh, will be asking for a motion to accept and file. I'd like to inform the council uh, that according to Kerry Coucher uh, uh, on an email to Madam Sue Richards, uh, he was informed by charter that their plans to make channel line up changes have been pushed back to sometime in September, so is there, there is no need, no need to act on that. Uh, I need a motion to uh, accept and file. President Hanna. I would make a motion to accept and file 941. Second. A motion and second to accept and file. Alderman Gisha, under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just as a reminder to the public that um, beginning in 2008, 
The state of Wisconsin took control of our cable contracts. We used to have a cable contract committee, if people would recall, and go through the negotiation for the 5% and all sorts of stuff. Um, if Charter decides to do this, whether it's September, whether it's tomorrow, it's the state of Wisconsin's duty now and responsibility right. based on um, state law that they are to take care of it. In the past, the city has taken care of it since the Charter came, but people have to understand it's call your state representatives. Uh, I would be happy to do that if somebody contacted me to do that, but they're the only ones who can now effectively fix problems with your, at least not your cable box, but well, we'll call them with your cable box problems as well, but with uh, issues such as this. Excellent point, Alderman. Yes, sir. Okay. So we have the motion to accept and file any further discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 942 we will hold for 958. Please make that notation. 943 through 956 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three. 957 by Alderman Gisha, Clayunas, Bourne, Bauk, and Montemayor authorizing waiving the competitive bidding process and entering into contracts for a custom manufactured police emergency response vehicle. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call oh, Alderman Mahassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Could I just have an explanation again as to the rationale behind the waiving of the bidding process? Yes. Alderman Gisha. Certainly. Uh, the, uh, there's really only one supplier and one vehicle uh, and uh, a company that the police department has had a lot of experience with, everybody's had a lot of experience with. It's really our only option for the specs that we're delivered. Thank you. There's not a lot of people building these things. Right. Thank you. Okay. There is no more. Alderman Rehassel. It's a follow-up question. So the, then the statement is that there is only one supplier? Categorically, there is only one supplier, or is there just one favorite, more preferred supplier? I'll ask Alderman Gisha to clarify that. Alderman Gisha. Uh, and unless the chief or another representative of the police department would, would uh, have more data, it's, uh, it's our report that no, you could, you could equip a Yugo if you want with this kind of stuff. There really is just one supplier that met the specifications. Okay. Please call the roll. Boak? Aye. Decker? Aye. <clears throat> excuse me, Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. No. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 15 Aye. ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 958 by Alderman Hannah, Kittleson, Ryan, Gisha, and Rinfleisch allocating up to $55,000 for reimbursement to Sesco uh, LLC for cost incurred in replacement of soils on its site in the business center. President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to suspend the rules due to a timing factor here. Is there any objection to suspension? There will be a question as to why. Please explain if there is no objection. There is no objection. Please proceed. Thank you. I'd like to put the resolution upon its passage and also accept and file on 942. Second. Motion and second. Is there, please explain why we need to suspend. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's just, we need to move ahead with the project, and this is, this would delay it considerably if we can't authorize SESCO. Okay, thank you. So we got 958 uh, as under discussion. The, the money, so for the benefit of the aldermen and the public, the money is coming from TIF. It is uh, either increment or land uh, sell money, or both, a little bit of both. There is no debt service involved, and there is no levy money involved. It all comes out of that same uh, piggy bank. There is no more discussion. Please call roll. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ryan. Aye. Zurich. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhassel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren Aye. and Bauk. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 959 lies over. 960 to be referred. Report of Committee 6, 961 to be referred. 
Report of Committee 7962 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 7224 based on the applicant's repeated law violations related to the license activity and failure to review all violations on the application. Vice President Boren. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the uh, report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Under discussion is Stephanie Bauer here tonight. She's okay. here, Your Honor. Uh, I will ask, uh, please proceed. I will ask if you wish to speak in a minute. Uh, Your Honor, I'm uh, going to be reporting what we got from the assistant city attorney. Um, Ms. Bauer appeared at our last meeting last Tuesday night. Ms. Bauer revealed a 2006 convent conviction for underage alcohol. The record of convictions she should have revealed is as follows. Uh, the charge was underage alcohol in 2006. Uh, it's directly related to the license activity and also another underage uh, alcohol in 2007, which is also related to the uh, license activity. Uh, Ms. Bauer should have revealed all violations. That was her first opportunity to appear before us, and she did. And based on her having repeated violations that are related to the license activity, that's very important. Uh, that's why the deputy city attorney uh, recommended denying her application, and the uh, committee uh, voted unanimously to deny. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Bourne. Ms. Bauer, would you like to address the council? Please come up. And again, the, the action is being considered by the council right now is to deny because you did not reveal all the violations on your application. When I went to go reapply for my liquor license at the end of June, I did not think that I was supposed to tell them about my 06 conviction of underage drinking because I previously had gone to one of those meetings. I first got my liquor license in 2006 and Right before that was when I got my first underage drinking and I came to the meeting and they put me on, I think like a license warning or something. So when I went to go reapply, I told them that I had another underage drinking. I think there was a miscommunication. I've been bartending at Bourbon Street for two years. It's my full-time job. I go to school full-time and if I lose my license, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I've been a loyal bartender there for two years and I love what I do. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? We have Alderman Ryan. Um, Your Honor, I don't know if I'm out of line here or if I can ask the question. Um, these violations are uh, related to light, her licensed activity. Can we expound upon that? Okay, we will ask. I would like question. to know, I mean, was she bartending and drinking underage at the same time? How were they related to the licensed activity? Okay. Vice President Bauer, would you like to address that? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'd have to ask. I'd have to ask Ms. Bauer to expound on whether those were while she was while she was bartending. Uh, I, I don't recall if we asked her that question, but I would open up the floor if, if you would like and ask her that. Uh, I guess why we take underage alcohol very seriously on the committee is that of the correlation of the underage alcohol consumption and also possibly. Uh, because of the underage uh, consumption in the past, uh, possibly uh, there being a greater risk of, of serving, uh, serving customers uh, that possibly shouldn't be served. Uh, I should add one other thing is that uh, if the license is denied, Ms. Bauer can still bartend. However, she cannot b bartend without supervision or she could not close the establishment without a licensed bartender being there. So she can still bartend but not she would have to be under the direct supervision of a licensed bartender. And the other side of the coin is if you grant her the license and she serves minors, she's losing her license. So it's something for you to weigh. Would you like to say one more time, please? And the question is, is your the violation of the underage drinking, uh, was that during the time period when you were bartending or at the time that you were bartending? It was not during the time I was bartending. The first one, I didn't even have my liquor license at the time yet. And the second one was on the weekend when I wasn't bartending. I have never drank while I was working. I take my job very seriously. Um, and when I do bartend, 
at work, I'm always by myself. I know I can, if I do get denied, I can work with somebody else, but the shift I work, I'm always by myself and I have the responsibility of closing the bar. Okay, thank you. Yep. And we have Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I, there was some talk about, there was some sort of like super secret bartender probation or something two years ago. If you, if it's possible, was, was there any violations after this probation or during this probation period or, or was everything just fine after that? I was curious about, I didn't realize that even existed. Somebody could clarify. Vice President Bourne. Thank you for the question, Alderman Gisha. Are you referring specifically to Ms. Bauer the, that if she was originally issued with a warning, is that right. your, uh, if she was originally, uh, and I think she brought this up when she peer, appeared before us, that when her license was granted originally, we granted it with a warning. And uh, so then if there was a subsequent underage alcohol related to, the, related to the license activity, then we would have taken that more seriously. Thank you. As a follow-up, was there another <clears throat> citation issued after the warning, or did she take heed to that warning and have no additional violations? Vice President Bourne, explanation. As far as I know, the second one would have been after she was granted her original license. Is that correct, Ms. Bauer? That's correct. She had another violation after the warning. Okay. Alderman Ryan. If I may ask, uh, Ms. Bauer, if she's uh, of age now, is she 21 years old now? And, uh, you know, that's relating an underage drinking to licensed activity. She wasn't drinking in the establishment or serving minors in her establishment. Um, I know we have these rules here, and the, the Law and Licensing Committee has a lot of responsibility. Uh, truthfully, I was on that committee for a year, and I begged to get off of it because I didn't like that job. It's, uh, it's one committee that's, that's no fun to be on because uh, uh, the majority of the time you're just telling people no. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not a feel-good committee, put it that way. Um, but, you know, when you, when you listen to this young lady, she's going to school. She's working full-time. This is her job she's had for two years. She's had no trouble on her job in two years. I'm going to vote to grant her her license. And I would ask, uh, what, one, of the, one of the wonderful things that this council does uh, is, is be able to, to listen and, and, and weigh the, the, the facts and, and the circumstances that are involved with each individual uh, uh, situation. In this case, uh, I think it would, uh, it would be wise for the council to, uh, to grant her the license with the caveat that you cannot continue to do that. Of course, as Alderman Ryan has said, she's no longer under 21, so if she drinks, she will be legal now. So we will call a vote on 962. So just to confirm, a no vote, Mr. Mayor, is to grant the license? A no vote would be uh, not to accept and adopt, and I guess what is it? And then it has to be a motion to grant the license. Okay? With the caveat, you cannot continue to be violating the law, and you have to report everything. Please call the rule. Gisha? No. Hannah? No. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? No. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. <clears throat> Rinfleisch? No. Excuse me? No. Ryan? No. <clears throat> Excuse me. Surik? Aye. <clears throat> Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? No. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? No. Decker? No. Six ayes, ten noes. Motion fills. Somebody like to make a motion to grant the license? I'll make it, Your Honor. Oh, Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll uh, make a motion to grant the license. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second. Under discussion? There is none. Please call the roll on this one, too. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? No. <clears throat> Excuse me. No. I'm sorry. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. 
and Gisha. Twelve eyes, four noes. Motion carries. License granted. Call the city clerk tomorrow. Thank you very much. Nine six report of committee eight nine sixty three by finance recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the two thousand eight budget, establishing appropriation for vacation and severance in the Mead public in the Mead Library Fund, donation from friends of the Sheboygan Activity Center, ready for reuse brownfield cleanup grant from DNA for Water Street TIF and Brownfield Grant from Wisconsin Department of Commerce for Water Street TIF by Finance, Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson. Clayunas. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Surak. Vanderweel. Verhassel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Bauk, Decker, Gisha, and Hannah. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinance is introduced 10, 964 through 967, lies over. 968 to be referred. Matters laid over. 11, 828, resolution number 750809 by Alderman Gisha, Clayunas, Boren, Bauk, and Montemayor authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, establishing revenue and appropriations for 2008 Community Development Block Grant Entitlement Program. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Heideman. Aye. Tilson. Aye. Meyer, Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Surik, Vanderweel, Verhassel, Wangaman, Boren, Bauk, Decker, Gisha, and Hannah. Fifteen ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. 845, General Ordinance Number 380809 by Alderman Montemayor, Surik, Meyer, Decker, and Verhassel amending the municipal code so as to change the job code and the job description for the city engineer in the city planning and development table of organization. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Surik. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. For Hassel, Wangaman, Boren, Bauk, Aye. Decker, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. and Heidemann. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by other matters. Uh, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. 969 is a committee report by salary and grievance with respect to changing the job descriptions and minimum job qualifications for newly hired mechanics in the uh, Public Works Department and uh, uh, I assume it's Public Works Department. 996, uh, 969 lies over. 970 is committee report by salary and grievance. Your committee to whom was referred our uh, resolution 810809 by all the persons born, Heidemann, Zurich, and Verhassel, granting a 90-day extension of residency requirement, recommends that the resolution be passed. That lies over. 971 is a committee report by salary and grievance. Your committee to whom was referred general ordinance 390809 by all the persons born, Heidemann, Zurich, and Verhassel, amending section 29-3A of the 79, excuse me, 75 Sheboygan Municipal Code relating to residency so as to provide for a one-time 90-day extension, recommends that the ordinance be passed. That lies over. 972 is a a report of officer by the city clerk submitting an amended summons and amended complaint in the matter of Beneficial Wisconsin, Inc. as nominee of MERS versus City of Sheboygan et al. That goes to risk management. 973 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a summons and complaint in the matter of Walgreen Company versus City of Sheboygan. That goes to risk management too. 974 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. That uh, goes to law and licensing. 975 is communication from Agnes Sorens, having called the police department wanting clarification 
on what the numerous signs around the city of Sheboygan meant, where the money was coming from for the special assignment of officers. And he goes to public protection and safety. 976 is a communication from Anna Horzine uh, and Starbucks Coffee Company requesting permission to host a 10K race on August 31, starting at Blue Harbor and continuing south on 7th Street and Lakeshore Drive to just south of the power plant and return to Blue Harbor. And he goes public protection and safety. Before I ask for uh, uh, my, uh, President Hanna to make a motion to go into closed session and read the, uh, the appropriate language, I'd like to let the council know, the public know, uh, and, and, and the people in the gallery uh, know that we're going into closed session because the statute allows us to go into cl closed session because it's confidential information. We're not holding a secret meeting. Uh, we're not doing anything that's inappropriate or improper. The law allows us to do this in special cases, and this is why we're going into closed session to discuss a particularly sensitive issue. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to close, to uh, convene in closed session under the exemption provided under section 19.851G of Wisconsin statute for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the city who is rendering oral or written advice concerning a strategy to be adopted by the city with respect to litigation in which it is involved. Second. Motion and second to go into closed session. Any discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Oren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Decker? Yes. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. We will convene in closed session. I'd ask that everyone leave except HR.